Um, thank you for joining us this morning for our webinar on integrating audio with Horner OCS controllers. Um, presentation is roughly about 15 minutes and we'll go into a Q&A then. Um, if you have any questions at any point, just feel free to put them in and we'll get to them then. Um, so let's get started. Welcome to today's tutorial. Let's get started. Let's have a look at today's agenda. We're going to talk about the OCS audio capabilities. We'll discuss the connections required for this feature and the configuration and programming behind it. We'll discuss some different applications of audio capabilities with examples. We'll have demonstrations throughout, and as always, we'll finish with a live Q&A session. Let's start with the Horner OCS audio capabilities. This allows you to play sound files through the audio output port of certain OCS models. These audio files are triggered through a program variable which instigates playback of the sound through the output port. There are volume and pause controls provided in the interface. If you want to use this feature, you need to connect an external amplifier and speakers, or a powered speaker with a built-in amplifier to the OCS. Not all of our models support audio capabilities. All of our models with dual Ethernet and dual CAN ports also support audio output. These models are the XL7, the EXL10, and the XL Plus 15-inch model. What audio file formats are supported? We support MP3 and WAV files, which are the most popular compressed and uncompressed formats respectively. The OCS requires stereo files, so if you have a mono file, you'll need to convert it. The bitrate can be anywhere between 96 to 320 kilobits per second. The sampling rates are supported from 24 kilohertz to 44.1 kilohertz. You can play back files from microSD, which is the default location, or from a USB flash drive. We recommend that you use 128 kilobits per second MP3 stereo format, as it will work best with your controller. Now let's discuss the audio connections. On the back of our compatible controllers, there is an audio in and an audio out connector available. Now the audio in capability is not enabled, there's no firmware to support it yet. Only the audio out is active. The audio output connection type is a 3.5mm stereo mini jack in a tip ring sleeve, or TRS, configuration. As you can see on the diagram, the left channel is connected to tip, the right channel is connected to ring, and the common signal is connected to sleeve. The audio output is a line level signal with volume control, so you can adjust the volume as you need. There's a small amount of Seascape configuration required. The audio configuration is accessed in the main section of Seascape under the program menu. Once you're in the audio configuration, you need to configure a series of trigger bits where each trigger bit will trigger the playback of an audio file from a list that we create in this dialog box. The variable that you assign to the triggers is integer based. So if you assign a single integer based variable, then you'll have 16 triggers. Once you've assigned your trigger variable, you also need to assign a status variable, which is two consecutive integers. The volume control is adjusted in the first integer in bits 1 through 8. The ninth bit of the first status word will be the pause control, so when that bit is turned, it will pause or resume playback. The error codes are stored in the second status variable. When you input the audio files you want to play, you need to specify the complete path and file name including the .mp3 or .wav extension. Now we'll discuss triggering audio playback from the screen. You would start by creating a screen for audio file playback on demand, which will be used by the machine operator. You'll want to configure toggle switches on the screen, which are tied to the trigger bit for the audio file that you want to play. You'll have one toggle switch for each audio help file you want to play. You would add another toggle switch for pausing and resuming the audio, which controls bit 9 of the first status register. When this is pressed, it will pause or resume the audio playback. Now we'll demonstrate triggering audio from the screen in Seascape. I'm in Seascape now. I have an XL7 connected over Ethernet, and I've already configured the communication parameters to interface between Seascape and the controller. 
We'll go into the program menu and select audio config. The first thing we're going to do is configure triggers. This is looking for an integer type variable and for every integer we'll have 16 consecutive triggers because each bit represents a trigger. So I'm going to name this variable audio trigger and it's a brand new variable. I'll press the right arrow key here and the check mark allows me to finish this up. The max capacity is 256 audio files for this OCS and since I'm using variable based programming I might as well configure it for the full capacity. So I'm assigning this a dimension of 16 and now I'm going to specify the index. I'll make the first index an index of 0. The status is two consecutive words so I'm going to call this audio status. And again it's a brand new variable. So I'm going to go in here and select a dimension of 2 because there are two consecutive words. And again, I have to specify my first index here. So I've specified my triggers and my status variables. I'll hit OK to make sure I did everything properly in case there is a problem with my syntax, which there wasn't. So now we're going to go right back into audio config. And now we're going to list the audio files so that the OCS knows where to retrieve them from. I start by pressing the add button. I just have some sound effect files that I'm going to play for demonstration purposes here. One of them is a doorbell. If I just start typing in a path, the OCS will try to interpret that as a variable. So I need to start with a single quote in order to specify my path here. My path is on the micro SD card, so I don't need to specify a drive letter. I've got a directory called audio, and the file I want to reference is doorbell.mp3 and I'm going to finish up with another single quote. I'll hit OK and that's been added. I'll add another file here and again I want to start with a single quote. This audio file is in the same directory and I'll reference its name buzzer.mp3 with another single quote at the end. So this should be it for my configuration. Now in this demo we're going to demonstrate how to play audio on demand from the touchscreen. So let me go ahead and open up the graphics editor here. I want to tie a toggle switch to the trigger bit for each of the sound files. So I'll start with my switch object. We'll make it large here and we'll double click it to configure it. This needs to be a toggle switch because we want that trigger bit to stay on while we're playing back the file. We'll tie the first trigger bit to the first sound file so I'll hit the Browse Variables button, I'll go to Audio Trigger, and then the first word of the audio trigger, and then the first bit. The indexes for arrays are zero based, but the bits are referenced starting at one. We'll label this as our doorbell, and we'll make the font size a little bit bigger. Let's copy and paste this object to create a new object for our buzzer. We want to do everything the same, except we'll change this to the second trigger bit. Our legend is now buzzer, and we're just going to demonstrate using some sound effect files here. Now, we'll add a pause button, which is going to be another toggle switch. I'll go to configure this from scratch. So I'll drop that on the screen. We're going to tie it to the ninth bit of the first status word. So I'll browse and look for audio status, which is what I configured. There's my first word of audio status, and I want the ninth bit. Okay. Let's go under Indicator Properties, and let's say that when this bit is off, the button will show the word Pause. When it's paused, the button will be labelled Resume. We'll make our font a little bit bigger. OK, now that's all configured, let's download this and see how it works in the OCS. So here's my OCS, and we've downloaded our program. I'll tilt this up so you can see we have our 3.5mm stereo jack plugged into the audio output port. When I hit this doorbell button, we should hear a doorbell. And as you just heard, that worked perfectly. Now let's try the buzzer. Let's try pausing the buzzer while it's playing. The pause button wasn't configured correctly. It should be a toggle switch. But other than that, this works perfectly. Let's go back to the presentation. 
Now let's discuss triggering playback from Logic. This is very useful in an automation system as it can sound a message that's triggered from an event on the machine. To set this up, we need to turn the trigger bit on in the Logic for the audio file that we want to play. Then the OCS will play back the whole audio file and it will turn the trigger bit off for you. You can pause the audio during playback with a pause bit. If your trigger bit is turned off while still playing audio, it's going to stop playing and cut off the sound. Leaving the trigger bit enabled will cause repeat playback of the audio. We'll discuss an application example of this functionality, which is a warehouse PA system. Let's say the XL7 controller is used for lighting control and other functions in a warehouse. There are few employees working the night shift, and as trucks arrive at the loading bays, a sensor is activated. The XL7 controller will send a notification across the PA system notifying the employees of the truck arrivals. Now what equipment would we need to implement this? All you need is for the OCS to connect to the PA system. It's simply a matter of connecting the audio output line level jack from the OCS to one of the inputs on the mixer of the PA system and you're ready to use this functionality. Another potential application of our audio integration would be audible queuing of a machine operator. Let's say you have a manual assembly station where an operator must perform a detailed hand operation requiring their full attention. The operator must be interrupted on occasion to manually remove a part from the machine when the operation completes. Audible cues can be used to alert the operator to remove that part. What kind of equipment would we need in this scenario? Well, you can tie the OCS audio output to an active speaker with an appropriate IP rating to periodically notify the operator. It's that simple. Now let's demonstrate this functionality in Seascape. We're back in Seascape, and we're going to go back into the audio configuration. Let's add another audio file here. Let's say this is for the application where we want to send an announcement out over the warehouse PA whenever a truck comes into the dock. Let's say we've got the audio file we want, and it's called doc1. So we'll type in the file path and name in single quotes. So now I've got a third file that I've added to my audio configuration here. And that will be triggered by the third trigger bit. Now let's see if we can write a little bit of logic that's going to trigger that message. So let's say that we have a sensor that detects that the loading dock is occupied. Let's add a variable, and we'll call this variable dock1sensor. So we have dock1sensor, which is a boolean, and we're going to map it to one of the digital inputs. Let's map it over to percent %i1. Alright, so now we'll start writing logic. We'll insert a normally open contact here for the dock1sensor. Let's create a new rung here. When our dock1 sensor turns on, we're going to turn on the trigger bit for our third audio file. Let's go down here to audio trigger, and we'll select the first word. Then we'll type 3 to make it the third bit. OK. Now we want to change this and make it a set coil. That should be all of the logic we need, it's a very simple application. I'm going to download this and go to our OCS in the overhead view now. We're in our overhead view now. Let's see if we get the loading dock message or not. Dock 1 is occupied. Dock 1 is occupied. So we're getting the audio, but the message is repeating, which is not necessarily what we want. Let's fix our logic so that we don't have that scenario. We're back in Seascape, so instead of directly triggering and setting our audio trigger from our machine condition, we want to trigger it with a one-shot instead. I'm going to add a new variable here, and I'm going to call it doc1trigger. It does not exist yet, so we'll create the variable, and we'll make it a boolean. We'll change this to a positive transition, and then we'll put another contact here, and make sure we've properly started our run. That should work now. So let's download it and try it out in the OCS. So we're back in our controller and we've just finished the download. Now let's see if our dock message only happens once. 
Dock 1 is occupied. So it didn't repeat, which is what we were looking for. So that was integrating audio with the Horner OCS all-in-one controller, and that wraps up our demonstration for today. Thank you for attending today's tutorial. The Q&A session will begin shortly. Okay, so that was that. Um, I don't see any questions currently in a net. So we shall take you back to my screen as always. Okay, so next week we do have J1939. Um, you can see the following weeks there as well. We should be updating this in the coming weeks for what we have planned for January and so on. Um, so if you do have anything you do wish to see that hasn't already been covered, please drop us a note and we will try to fit it in somewhere. Um, other than that, the registration links are all there for the, the next few. And uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, hope to see you again next week. Bye-bye.